Uh, thanks for uh, thanks for coming um, and uh, spending some time with uh, me to learn about uh, running uh, time speed distance rallies. Um, like I say, my name is Jim Feckety, and I'll be spending the next uh, about 90 minutes with you going through uh, some of the, the, the lingo and 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 uh, information that I've put together over the years on, on how to have fun and be uh, competitive in a what is a competitive event. Um, so let me share my screen here over here. I can see it. So there you go. Okay, here we go. Um, first thing I want to acknowledge uh, some folks because I actually um, started rallying back in the 90s in uh, Detroit and mainly worked uh, running with the Detroit Region SCCA and, and part of our rally program. We had a rally school and, and um, you know, I helped sort of put that on and then sort of walked away and uh, it kept going and when I wanted to put this around, I reached out to some of my old friends and asked, could I use their material? And they said, sure. And so a lot of what you're seeing here is based on their, their rally school. Um, and their rally school goes for a whole day. So we're, we're, we're compressing a lot of information into 90 minutes. Um, it, you can spend a lot of time talking about this stuff. So we start with what's a rally rally? Two people in a car going somewhere um, and using instructions. And it's usually somewhere interesting and, and, and the roads are usually interesting and that's, that's what it is. Um, doesn't have to be a com competition, but can be a competition. Um, it can be a speed competition. Um, and that's called performance rally. SCCA used to call it pro rally. It's the, you've heard probably heard of the world rally championship. That's, those are, that's go as fast as you can. You got instructions, you're going somewhere. Try and get there as fast as you can. You can also have rallies that are just basically a test of knowledge. You get a set of instructions and you answer questions along the way um, or, or are asked to observe certain things along the way, or they can be just luck, you know, just find five checkpoints and you get a poker, you get a playing card and the best poker hand wins. It can be a, 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 a game like that. Um, but what we're going to talk about today is TSD, which is Time Speed Distance Rally. So what is a TSD rally? TSD rally, time, speed, and distance. And the basic element is if you get any two of these, if you're going down the road, you get any two of these, you can calculate the third. If you know what speed you're going and you're going for a certain amount of distance, it's going to take you a certain amount of time to go that distance um, and that's that's the kind of the essence of the calculation so the idea is 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 you you basically stay on time you use two person teams driver and a navigator um, you know depending on the style of the event and how serious you are you're gonna have more people in the car but you really do need two people to do this right um, it's done on public roads and it's done at legal speeds. You'll, you'll find that the speeds in a, in a TSD rally are below the speed limits in all cases um, so that we can run on public roads and, and, and use interesting roads and, and be out there with, with the rest of uh, the folks that are just on, uh, on a drive. And like I say, the challenge is to stay on the route, follow the instructions, and then arrive on time to various locations on the course or on the route that are called checkpoints. And you gotta arrive on time at the checkpoints. You don't wanna be early or late. Um, the way we run, if you're a second late getting to a checkpoint, that's one point. And, and it's like golf, the lowest score wins. Um, so emphasizing, it's not a race. It's not a race. So, the priorities to have fun and be successful um, really are these, and this is sort of how the course is structured. The first one is staying on the road. Second one is staying on the route, which is following the route instructions. And the third one is, is staying on time and then and, and basically getting good scores by being in, at the checkpoints at exactly the right time. Any questions so far before we get into stay on the road? We don't have any questions in chat yet. Okay, and we'll keep chugging along. Um, we will have questions. So first of all, stay on the road. So Mercedes-Benz Club probably does not need this slide, but I put it in anyway. But your car should be in good condition. You should have gas in it. 
You should have good tires that are inflated correctly, including the spare. If you need to change a tire, you know, that'll take you out of the game if you don't have your spare inflated. You want clean windows. That's important because you're looking for signs and the signs could be out the front, it could be out the sides, that's all. You want all your lights in working order and, and any auxiliary equipment installed and tested. And, and, the, and the main piece of equipment you'll have in the car is the uh, smart device that is running the uh, Richter competitor app that we use for scoring. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. You can have other auxiliary equipment, uh, like sometimes rallies will run at night, you'll have lights in the interior of the car, and th that type of thing. So, what do I need in the vehicle? Very important, empty bladders. Um, good rally masters will always start a rally at a place where the bladders could be empty. That's, that's good practice. Um, the general instructions and the root instructions, those are important. And we're gonna, you're gonna see these um, in bold, GI and RI, because, because we're gonna reference these guys a lot. In fact, why don't we just take a second here um, and I'm going to, switch over to the general instructions. And each of you got these by email um, late last night. Um, this is an example of general instructions. And I'm not gonna go through these in detail because basically everything that's in the general instructions is what we're going to be talking about tonight, you know? You read these carefully and think about it, you really don't need this class. Everything you need to know is in these general instructions. A couple of things that we're not gonna talk about in the generals are um, how the course is measured, how the official course measurement is made and how the official mileage is, because it's not that important to run well. And then the details around timing and scoring. The thing you need to know is that uh, when you're coming to a checkpoint, which we'll talk about later, if you're one second early, you get one point. If you're 10 seconds early, you get 10 points. If you're 10 seconds late, you get 10 points. It, it doesn't matter, but, then, but it's all written here in the general instructions. Um, and then I sent you the root instructions, an example of root instructions. And this is what they'll look like. They'll usually have a start location kind of in the header and the columns are NRI, which is numbered root instruction. We'll talk about that later. Um, a column with what's called official rally mileage. This is the mileage that the rally master measured when he measured the clock course. He drove it and measured, you know, using an odometer of some flavor, measured it. Um, the instructions, which will be in this column here. This is what you have to do at each root instruction before you can move to the next one. Um, and then there's some notes and, and notes are just there to be helpful um, if, you, if you need it. So, so that's what the root instructions look like. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to these um, um, and as because we need to learn what all these terms are. So I'm gonna switch back to the PowerPoint. So you, need, you should have those two documents in the car with you. If you don't have them, you, you, it's gonna be really hard. Um, pens, pencils, and highlighters, you'll want to play and mark up things and maybe write stuff down. So you want that. And if you have pens and pencils, well, you need paper too. Um, and, and if you have paper and pens, and you probably need a clipboard to put it on so you can write. Um, you, you're going to need some timekeeping and scoring equipment. We're going to talk about that in the next uh, um, slide. And then very important, you need a smartphone or tablet that's running the Rishta Competitor app. Um, we'll talk about that at the end of the class in a little more detail, um, but the, the generals, our generals will have information about it. Our website also has information about how to download that app. It's on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store and how to set it up. We'll talk about a little later, but you need it in the car. If you don't have it in the car, you're, you're not, you're not going to, um, it's probably going to be tough to, well, you won't get scored. So timekeeping and scoring equipment for our rallies. Um, you need a clock set to official rally time, and that official rally time is what you're going to see in the app. This is a screenshot of the Art Rishta competitor app um, in the way it looks in Apple, in an Apple device. And you will see here something called the rally clock, and this is running, um, this is running, you know, clock time. It's, it's, a, it's a running clock. Um, we do, we're going to define that. There's other ways to define it, but that's how we're going to define 
official time for our rallies. Um, so you need to be able to measure time. You also need to be able to measure distance. And distance you measure with an odometer. Um, you can use the stock odometer in your car. It's very helpful to have a trip odometer. So you can set the odometer to zero because that will happen along the way and it makes life easier for competitors. You can also use an app-based GPS odometer. Those work pretty well, as it turns out. Um, and then the nice thing about the GPS odometer is it will give you mileages to the hundredth of a mile, which you kind of need to do well. A stock odometer works well if you have a old style one with the, with the rotating tumblers, because you can start to learn how to interpolate the hundredth of a mile. Um, and, and that's, that's very helpful. If you're going to run a GPS odometer on an app, it needs to be on a different device than the competitor app. And then you can choose to use a calculator. We'll talk about the calculations a little bit later. Or if you can do math in your head, the math isn't complicated. You just use pencil and paper. You don't need a calculator. Pencil and paper will do. And if you don't want to do any calculations, you can just run C to pants and just run the speeds. And we'll talk about that too. Um, register for our alleys at Rotor Sports Reg, just like you registered for this class. So I know you guys know how to do this. Uh, important, the driver needs to have a valid license and sufficient insurance. And it's in the waiver what those requirements are for insurance. Um, we're going to be using the speed waiver process um, because of COVID and we're trying to do things touch-free. Uh, we don't want people walking around with a waiver at the beginning of, of the rally, so we're going to be using the speed waiver process. I'm not going to go into details about that, but uh, if you uh, register for upcoming rallies and need help, just contact me and I'll, I'll help you through it. To use a speed waiver process, you need a smartphone. Don't you need a smartphone anyway to use the app, so, so, so it shouldn't be a heavy lift to to get a smartphone. Jim, will that work with a tablet or does it have to be a smartphone? I'll work with a tablet. You can do it with a tablet. It, it needs to be able to connect to the web. Well, yeah, it has to be connected, connected to cellular. Yeah, and it has to have a camera because it basically takes a picture of you to verify you or you uh, when you do the signature. Right. Okay, any others? So, so now you've got the car ready, it's ready to roll. You're at the start of the rally. What, what happens at the start of the rally? What do you need? What do you need to know? Well, prior to the rally, your best way to spend your time is to read the general instructions and read the root instructions. Read those ahead of time. Like I say, in COVID, in, in, in Typical time, you would normally come to the start of the rally and you wouldn't get those. You usually would get them a half an hour before the event start. You get the generals ahead of time, the root instructions you get a half hour ahead of time. You don't have time, that much time to look at. Our rallies, we're gonna send them out ahead of time so you have time to kind of pour through them. And that's a very valuable time spent to read the general instructions and read the root instructions. Um, and in addition, when you're at the start, you need to have the GIs and the RIs, and you should also know your car number, and your car number will be assigned by the organizer. You won't have it on your car. You don't have to like, like have a decal or anything, but you need to know what the car is because that's how you'll know what time to do things in the rally. We'll talk about that when we get into timekeeping, but you need the GI, the RI, and the car number. Those are things you need. You need to have the Richter competitor app running on your device, and it's important that nothing else is running. Best practice is to reboot your device, turn on the Richter app, and, and then just leave it alone. Either the general instructions or the root instructions will tell you when to start. What is your out time? I'm going to flip back quickly to these root instructions. And you'll see here, begin the rally at one o'clock plus your car number. That's why the car number is important. If your car number three, you start at 1.03 p.m. If your car number five, you start at 1.05 p.m. And, and it'll be in the instructions. So that number is also known as a car zero time or CZT. If you see CZT, 
you start at CZT plus your car number in minutes. So that's the other way. Like you would say, begin the rally at one o'clock, you might see CZT one o'clock. Might see either one of those. Either way, it's that time plus your car number in minutes. That's when, that's when you're told to start. Any questions? That's the stay on the road piece. You might also point out that you don't want to ever have that the Richta cap the app running on more than one device. I made the mistake of having it running on two devices and it really screwed up the data. Yes, yes, that, that's a bad idea. Good, good call, Gary. Okay, well, let's stay on the route. Now we're, gar we're on our way, We've, we're, we're following our instructions. And so a couple words about route following, the GIs and the RAs have everything you need. It's all there. Um, the other thing to know is that the event promotional material should defy, describe what the event, what we call the style of the event. So the rallies that here in MBCA, we're going to be running tour rallies, and there the, the, the course following or the route following is straightforward. Straightforward, easy to follow the route. That's not the challenge. The challenge is staying on time in roads where it might be little twisty, little interesting driving. That, that's, that's the challenge in a tour event. Um, the other type of event is called a course event. It's also known as a trap event. And there the challenge is following the course. They try to trick you into making you know, wrong turns or being early or being late um, by having kind of complex logic problems for the routes. It, it's a fun game too. I mean, it, it, these, are, these are both fun. Um, the rallies that we're doing uh, are going to emphasize the driving and the timekeeping and less about the uh, route following or the course following. So here's the fundamental concept of following the route, because even if we make it easy for you, it's, it's, you still need to pay attention. And, and the, to the two pieces here are, are the definition of an intersection. And, and so this is a quote from right out of the general instructions. It's any meeting of existent roads at grade level from which the rally vehicle could proceed in more than one direction without making a U-turn. So if I hit a place where there's more than one road coming out, that's an intersection. And the concept you need to know when you enter an intersection, you need to know how to leave it, which road to take when you leave the intersection. That, that's the fundamental thing you're trying to figure out. And the route following priorities, and, and they're in the GIs and the RIs, once again, it's all there. They will tell you how to correctly leave each intersection. So the route following priorities, this is copied once again, right out of the generals. First, an emergency structure or an emergency sign. And this is very rare. This is if like the bridge is out, you know, if, if, if the rally master is leading the, the, the rally and comes to a place where, you know, the road's gone, then okay, we need an instruction. And then that's, that could be interesting to figure out. That's sort of the, some of the fun of setting up a rally, but, but that's the number one thing that you would do, but that's very rare. So next is a route following instruction or route following action reference to an official mileage in the route instructions. I'm gonna jump back here again. So, so here's official mileage. So here's a right at traffic light. So that's a route following instruction next to an official mileage. That's the next priority. And then you could have a roof, a roof following action without a mileage. So it might just say right at traffic light and you just have to go right at the next traffic light. Doesn't matter what mileage it is, it's right at the next traffic light. And then if none of those things apply, you can't do the route instruction that you're doing, then you follow the principal road. And the follow, a principal road is the obvious continuation of the road on which you're traveling. That's, that's, that is it for route following. So if you're supposed to leave the principal road, or if the principal road isn't obvious, you'll be given a route instruction. And the road can be defined by the road surface. You know, like, you know, if you're on a road and this one's paved and this one's dirt, that paved road is the principal road. The official black on yellow curve arrows, the center lines, you know, double yellow lines, stop signs, yield signs, those all define the principal road. And, and, and it should be obvious. We're, 
the, the rally master in a tour rally won't be trying to trick you into um, getting off course. The principal road should be obvious. Any questions about that? Because that's, that's kind of the fundamental way to follow things. So. There aren't any questions. Gary just had a comment that if our students run a PCA rally, they'll find that the tour rally is closer to what we're doing. Yeah, they run course rallies in PCA. So if you want to try a logic, logic game, try one of theirs. They're fun. I like it. They're, they're fun. There's nothing wrong with them at all. Um, okay, you all know how to do this now. So who can tell me which way the principal road goes? Is the principal road the one that goes to the right? Or is the principal road the one that goes to the left? Maybe, maybe the one that goes there. to the right. The one that goes to the right. Do you know why? And wait, tell me why the road goes to the right? Because that's correct. The other one has a stop sign uh, protecting it. That's correct. That's correct. So in this intersection, this road to the right is the principal road. This, when you see a, a backward facing stop sign coming into the intersection, that's what we call stop sign protection. And so that would tell you that the principal road is going right. Now for our rallies, if I'm the rally master and, and, and we're kind of new at the game, I'm going to give you that instruction. I'm going to say, keep right at that mileage, you know, but I don't have to. By, by the rules of the game, that that is the principal roads going to the right. Here's another one. Which way does the principal road go? Who can tell me which way the principal road goes? And no fair if you've seen this example before. Anybody want to take a guess that hasn't seen this before? Straight on. Straight on is the principal road. Anybody else believe that? So this is this is this is probably the trickiest principal road follow that you'll run across. And, and the reason you have to be careful is because the rally master himself may not catch this. Because if you go a little closer, buried in the woods here is a stop sign for Fitz Road. So the principal road actually goes left. You can see that's the stop sign right there. Once again, my rallies, I'll give you the instruction. I'm not going to make you guess that. Once we're good at this, you know, we got a lot of people that are getting really good scores. Eh, maybe not, but but for now, yeah. But but that's that's it. The, the, you got stop sign protection ahead. That road goes to the left. So following the principal road, it should be obvious. If it's not obvious, you should get an instruction. If if and and certainly for for the rallies that we're running, certainly for this year and or, or at least early in the year, it, it should be obvious. Another concept is the non-existent road, and that's if you, a road like this is, is, is posted, no outlet, or do not enter. Or if it's not a road, it's a planned entrance, a parking lot, a private drive. Uh, we, those roads don't exist. So if you're working on an instruction, it says left. It doesn't have any mileage, doesn't have anything else. It just says left. You can't do it here. That road does not exist for the purpose of the rally. You've got to go find the next left where the road actually exists, if you will. Okay. So you'll see in the in the, in the root instructions, these typical intersection classifications, a crossroad, which looks kind of like that, um, a side road, which is where there's just one road going off to the side. It could be a side road right or a side road left. Um, you'll see T intersections, and they don't have to be perfect Ts. They can be slanted Ts. That, that, that's, they're not always nice flat T's like that. And, and, and Y intersections, those are, those are, those, the, the ones that I showed you, the first one I showed you would have been a Y intersection. I would have said right at Y or keep right would have been the instruction for that. Couple more concepts, special signs, you know, official octagonal stop signs and official triangular yield signs in the root instructions will all be in capital letters. It will say stop in capitals or yield in capitals. So those are official signs where you have to stop or you have to yield, that's expected. Um, another concept is an opportunity. This is a location where a root can be, root following action could be executed, you know, left at second opportunity 
if that's your instruction and you don't have anything else, you got it. Okay, here's a left. I can't really let that one go. I'm going to go to the second left, and now I'll turn left. That's the concept of opportunity. And then other signs that you see along the route, they will be in quotations, and they may not be complete. And here's an example. Here's school bus, st school bus stop ahead sign. You might see it. It might be referenced in the route instructions as school bus. It might be referenced as stop ahead. It might be referenced as ahead. It might be referenced as stop in quotes in lowercase. It will not be referenced as stop in all capital letters. Stop sign with capital letters is an official octagonal stop sign. And finally, you might find helpful hints are in parentheses. And I'll, I'll just jump back over to the roots here for a second. So like when you see this here, right at stop, South Chestity or S Chestity, I'm giving you the mileage, it's a right at stop. You really don't need to know what road it is. You don't need that information. It's in parentheses, it's helpful. That, that's what is in it helpful. So that's the root following. That's really all there is to root following. It should be pretty simple, but uh, once again, we can uh, take some questions if there's any out there. There are no questions in chat right now. Yeah, I'm rocking it tonight, man. Oof. Let's keep going. So now comes the fun part. So now I've got my car is all set. It's ready to go. We're in good shape. I know how to follow the route. Now I got to stay on time. Now I've got to stay on time. So let's figure that out. So we'll start with some more definitions. And once again, these are in the generals and you'll read them. Cast, change average speed to, e.g. cast 35. That's the speed you're expected to run at when you get to that, when you leave that, that location where that root instruction is, you start going that speed. That's when you, when you depart, that's the speed you're, you're departing. And you stay at that speed until you either change the cast or you start a transit zone. We'll talk about those. NRI, we've already talked about it a couple of times, a numbered route instruction. We know that. We also have mentioned car zero time, CZT. That is the perfect departure time for car zero. Car zero, that would be the, the, the lead car in the rally. The rally master is usually car zero. And your, your perfect departure time is that car zero time plus your car number in minutes. So if you're one o'clock and is car zero, is CZT one o'clock, your car number four, your departure time, 1.04 p.m. Okay. Next time keeping is, is checkpoints and checkpoints are the locations are on the route where something happens. And for our rallies, and I, I realized this sort of when I was re reviewing this just to, this tonight when I was looking at it for the last time, is in our rallies, the competitor app alert will happen when you hit a checkpoint, always. You'll always get a competitor app alert when you hit a checkpoint. It may or may not be one where you get a score, but you'll always get a, 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 uh, um, an alert from the app when you hit a checkpoint. And a checkpoint is a location where something's going to happen. Something needs to be done. So the most important ones are scored checkpoints. And these are the ones that we use to, um, to give you your scores and tell you how good you're doing at driving on time. They are usually not identified in the root instructions. They can be, but usually they are not. And what happens when you pass a scored checkpoint, you'll hear the alert. At that time, your arrival time is recorded. So they're, they're running basically on GPS. And when you're, when the GPS, the app is looking for in the GPS in, in the device match up, that's when you'll hear the alert. When that happens, it'll record your arrival time. It will also give you your score because the app, the Rally Master puts that calculation into the app 
you know, what time you're supposed to be there will be in the app. So it will measure your actual time. It knows when you should have been there. So you will get your score. You'll know whether if you get a three or three seconds early or late, you get a 10, you know, or you might get a zero, in which case, you know, you're perfectly on time within that one second window. Um, you may receive information about how it's calculated. It's it's clumsy to get that calculation information in there. It, for, for the Delana Gallup rally at the end of the month, you're going to get that after the rally um, in a big sheet. Um, I, you will get that shared with you, but um, if, if you want to, you can tediously type it into the app. It's, it's difficult. Our checkpoints, if you're used to running TSDs kind of the old way, you used to often stop at a checkpoint and go get your score. We don't do that with the competitor app now. You do not stop at a scored checkpoint. Quick stop. question, Jim. Yeah. The question is, if I'm running, if I'm two minutes late at a checkpoint, does my running time reset to zero so I don't need to speed up for the next stage? Good question. The answer is the checkpoints are the way the uh, this rally will run or the way rallies typically run is from a car zero time or the beginning of the section your time from that car zero time, the beginning of that time portion to that checkpoint. And it does not reset at that point. You'll be timed, the next checkpoint will be from the start of that checkpoint or from the start of that section to the next checkpoint. So if you hit that you know, two minutes late, say, like you got there two minutes late, you better stop and put in two minute time allowance for the next checkpoint because you're off time. If you're, if you're running early, if you get there two minutes early, just stop for two minutes. It does not reset. It, it will reset when you have a um, new section and we're gonna go through a, a, an interesting example and, and we'll come back to that and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you when that's, that's um, when that Jim, happens. Yeah. Jim, the East training rally are all checkpoint relatives. So you don't cue. Each checkpoint starts a new time. That's the other way to do it. So and and so so that's that's right. Um, and that's this. I'll, I'll jump down here to the flying start checkpoint because well, you Jim, will. No, Jim, not, but to, to get back to get back to Tom's question. The whole point is you're going to discuss in a little bit the whole concept of, of buying time so that you don't need to speed up and you don't need to exceed speed limits. Correct. In order to still recover from this two minute late at one checkpoint. That's right. That's just, that's correct. So, and I'm going to come back to you, Tom, Joe, here in just a second, because the other, the, here's the other types of checkpoints and, and the rest of these are not where you get scores. It's just where something else is happening. So there'll be a CZT checkpoint. When you see a CZT in the instructions, when you get there, you'll, you'll hear the alarm go off. They're identified in the route instruction. They'll give you the perfect departure time for your car number. For car number zero, once again, your car number gets added to that and that's your, your start time. What Joe's talking about is what we call flying start checkpoints. We use these for some of the rallies we do in drives, and we also do them in, and Joe's going to be doing them in these, the test rally. I, I assume this is what you're doing, Joe. And, and these, where the arrival time is the departure time. So when you get there, that's when you start. The other type that we use is what's called a time check checkpoint. That's just to make sure the app is running. It just goes off and it, it stops the clock. And, and we like to put these at the beginning of the event so that you can confirm that your app is running. Okay. Here's some more definitions. A transit zone, and this is a part of the rally where it's covered in a certain amount of time given in the root instructions and there's no cast and there's no scored checkpoints. And I'll, I'm gonna show you once again, an example of that. And so this is the start of the rally. You're gonna begin a 30 minute transit zone. It's telling you, you've got 30 minutes. It gets telling you, you get 30 minutes basically to get to the location down here that says end transit zone. 
Now, sometimes it'll say begin 30 minute transit zone to NRI 14. In this case, it didn't, but, but basically you have, you know, basically from zero miles out here to 17 miles, you've got a half an hour to cover that amount of time. You don't have to run at a certain speed. You just have to get there in that amount of time. So there's no cast, so there's no way to score it. It's, it's, it's basically unscored rally. Jim, would you define cast again, please? Change average speed to basically the average speed that you're expected to run um, at that when you leave that location. I'm gonna bump back, I'm gonna pop back over here again because here it is. Here's the end of the transit zone, your cast 44. So when you leave this spot in ride 14, you're expected to be going 44 miles an hour. That's what Instantly. Cast is. Instantly. So you might want to leave a few seconds early. Because you're right, it's instantaneous. 44 miles an hour from that that point. Well, it... Questions? So another part of a rally where there's no score is what's called a free zone. It's, it's a part of the rally that actually has a cast, you're running on a cast, but the rally master is telling you, you're not gonna run into a score checkpoint. There won't be any. So in that part of the rally, when you begin a free zone, you don't have to worry about running into a score checkpoint until you see end free zone or until you see begin, well, until you see end free zone, that, 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 that's a free zone. Um, another concept, pause. It's a time given a number root instruction and basically you add it to perfect rally time to compensate for stop lights, stop signs, or busy intersections. Um, if you look in the generals that I gave you, you'll see that you're expected to pause five seconds at every stop sign in a time portion. And that's to give you time so you don't have to speed through that intersection. You have time, you can go up to that stop, you can stop, you can look left, look right, make the turn or go straight or do whatever you're doing there. But basically, when you hit that, you say, okay, I'm supposed to be here at, you know, one o'clock and 30 minutes and 10 seconds. I add five seconds to that time. Now it's 1.30.15. I'm just going to add that pause time to, to, the, uh, to your perfect time. And there's a number of other things. Uh, you can look in the glossary. The last piece of the general instructions is the glossary. There's a bunch of other definitions in there that will explain what's in your root instructions. Any questions up to this point? Because now it's gonna get it's gonna get thick now. Right. Okay. So running a TSD rally, and, and like I said, I've run a bunch of these things and I've thought hard about how sort of to organize how to organize your brain, especially as a navigator, how to think about, you know, running a rally and running it well. And then, and especially if you're running seat of pants, this is, this is sort of the kind of thinking that, that probably will help you be more successful. So if we think about fundamentally, what is a TSD rally? It, it's a series of numbered root instructions. You saw, you've seen the list I've shown you. It's a series of root instructions and it's going to alternate between non-scored sections, which are transit zones and free zones, and scored sections, where you're running on a cast and, and you can expect a scored checkpoint. Basically, if you're in a if you're if you're running on a cast and you're not in a free zone, then you're you're in a scored section and you should be uh, running on time. So you're alternating between those two. You're in a transit zone, you're in a scored section or a hot section. You're in an unscored section, you're in a scored section. And, and then basically you're just going back and forth between those two. So it's helpful to know what to do when you're in each one of those. So if you're in a non-scored section, what you're trying to do is you're trying to arrive at the end of that section, the location of the next scored section. You wanna get there early and you wanna know three important things. One of those is what time you leave that 
that end of that scored non-scored section, the end of that transit zone or the end of that free zone, and you're, you're back on cast. You need to know what time you're leaving. You need to know what is the cast, what speed should you be running, and you need to know what the mileage is at that location so that you, you can, can, can follow the route. Those are the three things you want to know. If you're in a non-scored section, you're trying to get to the next scored section, you're trying to know those three things. If you're in a scored section, that's easy. You've got to leave on time, leave correctly, follow the route, run the cast, and zero the checkpoints. That, that's, that's the idea. Arrive at exactly the correct time. Zeroing, that's why we use the word zero as a verb. Zeroing a checkpoint is exact, arriving exactly at the correct time, getting zero points. So, so that's, so I'll stop right there. Is there, is that clear to everybody how that, that works? Like say, and, and the reason it's important, especially for SOP is because if you get to the end of a non-scored section, you know what time you're leaving, you know the cast, know the mileage, then you just need to drive the speed and, and you'll probably do pretty good. You'll probably do okay. Even if you don't do a bunch of calculations. So, 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 but, but you need to know if you don't know, if you don't leave on time, you're starting out in the hole. You need to know how to leave on time. And like I say, when you're in the scored section, then you do your best job to run the cast. That's where the navigator, if the navigator is helping you out with calculations, that's great. Um, if the navigator is just running the route for you, then, then, then the driver has to just sort of figure, you know, do your best. But if you start on time, you're going to do better than, than, than you think. Okay. All right. So let's let's now let's try to stay on time. Let's take the next level of of of, of complexity into now. You want to try to try to keep the, the navigator is going to try to keep the driver on time. So once again, you need to know your three critical things, your out time, your cast, and your mileage. Out time is a, is a colloquialism. You'll find when you're building your teamwork between a driver and a navigator, you'll come up with shortcuts for, for some of these things. Like, like, like what's my out time driver as, as a driver? It's like, I, that's what you're screaming at your navigator all the way. You're going through that transit zone. What's my out time? What's my out time? So, so you need to know that. Um, so we'll do an example here. We're going to say the timeout is 1.30 and zero seconds. Make it easy. Cast, we're going to leave leaving at 30 miles an hour. We're going to say this is like the beginning. You know, we just had the end of a transit zone. We zeroed the, we zeroed the odometer, so the mileage is zero. It doesn't necessarily mean the beginning of the rally. It could be somewhere in the rally, but we zeroed the odometer, so the mileage is zero. So you're telling, you're sitting there looking at the clock. You know what time. You're in the navigator. You're looking at the clock. You know that, that, that what time to to tell the driver to leave. You'll tell him to leave a few seconds early. You'll tell him go. Driver goes, he's going 30 miles an hour. It'd be nice to know when the car has traveled two tenths of a mile, what time is it? So you can compare that to the time you actually get there when you drive two tenths of a mile and, and see if you're early or late. That's what you'd like to do as a navigator. So I'm leaving at 1.30. I wanna know what time it is when it's 0.2 miles, because then when I, that odometer clicks over 0.2 and I look at the time and, and, and I can compare it to what that perfect time is, I need to know what that perfect time is to compare it to the time that I actually got there. So how do I calculate that perfect time? So here's our example. We're out at 130. We're going 30 miles an hour, and zero miles. What time is it when the car has traveled two tenths of a mile? And this is the only equation you really need. And so there's that two tenths of a mile. And, and you do the dimensional analysis, you end up here at seconds, but it's, it's the mileage divided by the speed times 60 minutes per hour times 60 seconds per minute, and you get 24 seconds. So it should take me 24 seconds to drive 0.2 miles. So, so if I know that, I'm looking, I got the watch here and I'm looking at the odometer. That odometer clicks over to 0.2 and it's 26 seconds. Oh, you're too late. You got to speed up. Or it clicks over to 0.2 and it's 20 seconds. And oh, you're four early. I got to slow down. And so you give the driver that feedback. And then, okay, if I'm going 0.4 miles, it's going to be 
48 seconds. It's going to be 48 seconds. If this is 0 0.4 miles, this is 48 seconds. And you can do that every two tenths of a mile. If that's too fast, you do it every half a mile, or you can do it every mile, whatever, whatever is your comfort level for doing that. So, or you can just help the driver stay on the route and let the driver drive it seat of the pants. That, those are the ways you do it. But if you can run a few of these calculations and give the driver a sense of, of how early or late they are, you're going to run better scores. Any questions about that? Yeah, Jim, what's, um, this is Diana. Yeah. What is your recommendation for doing these calculations? Maybe, I mean, a lot of people can do these in their head, not me. <laughs> what, yeah, what tools I, do you have to, to help there? I think, I think for a stock class navigator, um, and if you're running rally tables, and that's the next slide is rally tables, um, you know, a good driver, give them a hack every half a mile, they'll, they'll be okay. They'll be okay. They'll, they'll, they'll score well. You can, if you're a stock class navigator and you're calculating or you're using tables and you're giving your driver a hack every hack. Okay. Sorry. A hack. A hack is when you actually make that measurement that, 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 that when I check, I look at the mileage, I hit the mileage, I look at the time and make that comparison and tell the driver whether I'm early. I would call that a hack time hack. So I give a hack every, every half a mile. That's pretty, the driver should be able to do pretty well. Like when I, when I, I have a calculator that I program to do this, I can give them, I can give them a hack every 10th of a mile. I can, I can do it because, because I have a, I have a, I can do the calculation and then I can split a clock in my calculator and I can give them a hack every 10th of a mile. That, that's, that's, that's even better, but, but a half a mile, even a mile, the trick is, you know, is you, if the driver, if you do some sort of a, route following action, like a side road left, and you had to wait for a car. And now, okay, no, I'm late. I don't know how late I am. You want to give the driver some feedback pretty soon after that turn to tell them just how late they are. So you can determine like, you know, can I make it up easily? Like if I'm down five seconds, okay, I can probably make that up by going, instead of going 30, I'll go maybe 33 or 34 and I'll get back on time. If I, if I really got stuck there, okay, I may even want to take a time allowance, which is coming up a little later. But to answer Diana's question, the things you can do are either just don't worry about calculations and run seat of the pants, use a calculator, use a programmable calculator, or use the rally tables that you're going to talk about next. And there's also two other ways you can do it. One of them you can read if you've got a modern Mercedes, you get this actual number on the dashboard if you want it. It's not the instantaneous speed, it's the average speed. You do have to reset it every time you change a cast. The other way, or there are apps like on your tablet that you can get in big numbers that'll give you average speed. Not instantaneous speed, average speed. You do have to reset it every time every time a cast change. And then you have to have it located somewhere where you can see it because you have to then adjust your speed to get up to the cast speed or below the cast speed. So there's a whole bunch of ways to do this besides the calculations in modern day equipment. Right, and there's modern day equipment that for real serious rallies that have rally clocks in their cars. <laughs> yeah, there is well, that. There are those apps too. You can have the, you can have a tablet with that app on it, mm -hmm. which is which is, yeah. And, and the other thing I'll tell you is that 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 you know Richter, you know Rich Beretta, the fellow that does these, he 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 has a calcul rally calculation app. I mean, you can, I, I think he charges like three bucks for it or something, but it'll it'll do the math for you. Um, and, and, and his is not the only one. There's several out there that, that will do this for you because basically you want to be able to, basically you want to be able to, to, to put in the speed, give it that mileage interval and it'll tell you the perfect time. And then you compare it to the actual time. And, and, and 
and, and you can do it. Like I say, some people can do the math in their heads. They're, my, my old navigator was able to do that. There was just pencil shards and eraser shards everywhere in the car when we were done rallying. He just, they, we stayed on time. I, I could never do that. I had to, I had to write a program to do it because I could not do it. Um, but like I say, Rick, Rich Brett has got a nice app to, that, that will do all this math for you. And like I say, we'll go to the next slide because um, – because this is what a rally, this is what a time distance table, uh, we call a rally table, but it's also basically a time and distance table. What you, what you have here is a table um, for given speed. It will give you that. So it's 12 seconds per tenth of a mile. Remember we said 24 seconds for two tenths, so 12 seconds per tenth of a mile or two minutes per mile. And if you want something between that, like if I want to know how long it takes me to go 0.47 miles, I just use this table. There's the point four. There's the point oh seven. It's going to take me 56 seconds to go 0.47 miles. So, and and this is an Excel spreadsheet. It's actually up on our website. You can download it. You just this 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 is the only input cell here. You put the speed in it. And the thing is, especially with our rallies, if you get the stuff ahead of time, you can do all these calculations ahead of time. You know, don't don't plan on doing this for every rally you ever go to because you won't. It, it, you won't always get this, but for our rallies, because we're going to send you the instructions ahead of time, you can go through, you have the official mileage, you can count, do all these calculations ahead of time if you want to. And this table is something that you created. It's not something commercially available, correct? Correct. It's my tables. There's also, I put uh, one of my old rally buddy colleagues as his tables up there too. There's two sets of, right. two yeah. sets of rally tables up on the website. You can use yeah. either one, whichever makes more sense. Yeah, it's in Excel, so you need to have Excel or Pages. Good point. Yeah, you do need Excel. Well, I don't know. I don't, yeah, I don't know if I would. Well, I suppose we probably would run, but Excel it works fine. Or numbers. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I'll tell you, if you get if you're a navigator and you get into it, you will figure out your own way here. You, everybody's different. Everybody something for people than others other things and and frankly that's part of the fun is is, is figuring out how to, how to do this do this stuff do the count you know keep the communication going staying on route getting better and better scores that that's that's where the fun is a lot of the fun is okay i'm going to try now for you to put put it all together um and, and, and basically run a section of rally or a couple sections of rally and, 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 and help you through what it sort of looks like. So we're gonna run a rally. Here's a section of rally. Um, it's pretty straight, road's not going anywhere. So we're not gonna worry too much about route following. This is really going to be about timekeeping. And, and you can see down in here, we've got different number of route instructions that we're going to be showing you. So at the same time, we're going to be basically talking about a number of the concepts that we have put together. So car zero time, which we defined earlier, a transit zone, which we defined earlier, a free zone, which we defined earlier, cast, um, these two boxes are mileages. And so one box says your mileage. And so when you're in the car and you're on a rally, there's two places you can get a mileage. You can get a mileage from the route instructions, the official mileage from the route instructions. That's what the rally master is using to calculate. So, so, you know, you always want to calculate with official mileage if you have it, but you may not always have it. And you might have to depend on your odometer in your car. And that may vary a little bit from the official mileage. It's, it's often never, well, it's almost never going to be perfect. And then down here, I show something called checkpoint mileages. And these are basically the official mileage that the rally master is using for calculating the, the, the perfect time. So your mileage may vary. If you're, if you get to, if you're right on time when you get there, but your mileage is off, your time is going to be off. And then down here, we're going to do an example. We're going to do this example, and the example is going to be car number four. So we're going to start the event. And so we're going to start with a non-scored section here. 
So we're going to start here. CZT is one o'clock. And we're going to begin a 15 minute transit zone. BTZ 15 minutes to NRI number nine. The mileage is zero. And the time I'm leaving, because I'm car number four, is 1.04 p.m. Okay. Here's the interesting thing. My, I, I can, I'm told my starting time is 1.04 p.m. But I know there's no checkpoints. In this first 15 minutes, there's no checkpoints. I don't have to leave at 1.04. I can leave early. I can leave early. If I, 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 if I leave early, I'm going to have to sit here at the end of the transit zone because when I get to this here, I'm going to start a scored section. But I don't have to wait till 1.04 p.m. to leave. I can leave early. It doesn't matter. I've got 15 minutes of running and I've got, I've got 14 miles of driving and, and that's going 60 miles an hour, 15 minutes, 14 miles and 15 minutes. That's pretty fast. So I, I want to leave a little early. Don't have to wait till 1.04 p.m. That, that's, that's a common misconception for novices is they'll wait until 1.04 p.m. to leave. You don't have to. You don't have to. So I've gone my 15 minutes. I'm at the end of this transit zone. And now the instructions say zero odometer. So I went to 14.23, but I get a fresh start here. Zero, 0.00. 0, 0. And I'm going to start now. I'm going to start a time section, a scored section. So I'm going into a scored section. Once again, sort of my nomenclature when in my car was always, we're going hot. Rally, rally's going hot here. The instructions give me a cast. It's gonna be 30 miles an hour. I know my out time because my out time is at 104 plus 15 minutes. So I gotta leave here at 119 PM. And I know my mileage is zero. Remember the three things you need to know. What's my mileage? What's my cast? What's the time that I leave? Now I've got those things. Okay, maybe I'm here early. I might get here at maybe one o'clock on the nose. I might sit there for 20 minutes if I leave really early. But when it hits 119, boom, I'm out of there. I'm gone. Hey, there's a checkpoint. Now, the official mileage, 1.35, that's 120.142. And, and so I will get the app. The app will bong. It will show me what time I got there. It might be like 121.40 or 121.45. If it's 121.40, it's going to give me a score of two. And it'll be right there in the app. You hear the alert, you'll see the time, you'll see the score. You keep going. Okay, I, I got there a little early. Now I've got a cast change. Okay. I'm going from cast 30 to cast 45. So in order to keep my time going, I have to be able to calculate. I need to know this mileage. This is the mileage and that might be in the root instructions. If it's not in the root instructions then I need to read it from my odometer, but I need to know that mileage because then I have to calculate up to this mileage and I'd be 1.25, 18 p.m. That's what time I should have been at that cast change. And now I'm going 45. It's instantaneous. I'm going 45. So I probably started speeding up maybe a little bit before that route instruction. And now I'm going 45. So now what happens? Oop, another checkpoint. So, so, so once again, get a bong get the time, the, the perfect time will be in there. It'll tell me my score, I keep running. NRI 20, we begin a free zone. So we're now in a non-scored section. We're still running on a cast, but we're in a free zone. The rally master is telling you there's not going to be a checkpoint between this point and, and somewhere down the line where you see an end free zone. And that's where we end up here. It's in free zone. And we're going to end the free zone. We're going to begin another transit zone. And we, we, we know the, the mileage. Let's, let's stop there and let, let folks sort of ruminate on that and see if there's any questions. The free zone would be where you would make up time or bleed off time as it need be 
to get back on your absolute perfect time, right? Well, you could. I mean, you'd like to be running on perfect time all the time. Um, what you end up doing in a free zone is you don't. You can run early now. I can get to that end of that transit zone. I can get to the next scored section early, and then get myself together and then leave on time. Yeah. So, so you will get. I mean, you know, if if, if you're running a seat of pants, the only feedback you're going to get on. Your, on, on whether you're early or late is when you hit a checkpoint and then right. you'll know I'm, I'm early or late. So, 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 you know, you'll be adjusting when you hit that checkpoint, you'll be adjusting at that point. Oh, I'm five or eight. I better get going faster. Right. I'm five early. I better slow down. So you're going to be adjusting along the way. When you get to a free zone like this, if it's like this one here, this is six miles long, you know, I might be able yeah. to get a half hour or a half a second or a half a minute ahead. I can get to the end of this thing and then like I got a half a minute and my navigator can can finish some calculations and maybe we get a drink of water or something and then off you go again. So so you can run from this thing here. Jim, how would how would the rally master um, denote to you that you were maybe starting a new fresh time time new I guess a flying flying start starting starting point you know joe's got this rally where each section it's not cumulative each one starts over that you start right. it basically starts the clock again what how is that indicated in the route instructions that's a czt car zero time because you as the rally master set that time so so you that that's your what you call quote unquote fresh start if you get so, if you get a you had a car zero time and it can either tell you, you know, you leave at a certain time or it could tell you when I get to that car, when I trip the thing, I'm going to leave at the top of the next minute. That's the other way you can set up the app. But that car zero time is, is when you get a chance to sort of start fresh again and not have to carry all the calculations. Okay. What are the questions you got? We'll keep going here. So now, so so this is this is this is a little tricky, and and I will tell you up front that we're not doing this on my next rally, Delana Gallup. Gallup, you won't have to do this, but you could get to the end of this free zone, and now you're starting another transit zone, and it's ten minutes. But you ten minutes from when? You still have to finish the calculation up to that BTZ. So that cast thirty from zero to three point one five, and then cast forty five from three point one five to eleven point two five. You have to do that calculation to know what time you leave, and then add the ten minutes to the end of the transit zone, and know that okay, I got ten minutes. So now I'm leaving for another scored section, and I'm starting. I'm getting cast thirty. I've got a mileage, and I've got a time. So, so you, you, you just have to keep that going. Now, now, I'll show you quickly. So another checkpoint, you can throw a free zone in here and see you can have a free zone within that scored section. You know, you just have, have this, this three miles and you might be like going through a town or, or you know, like some, some tricky navigating piece. You don't want people to have to try to stay on time. You give them a free zone so they don't have to. But, but and, Jim, you, you did say the free zone has a cast. Correct. So they still have to stay on time. They just aren't any checkpoints. That's well. According, it, it, according it, it, to your rules, according to the rules that you're setting up there, a free zone isn't truly free. Like you can't stop and have lunch in a free zone. If according you, to the rule that you uh, that you described earlier. You can't stop and have lunch in a free zone. Well, you probably don't want to stop and have a lunch, but if you know there's, you only have to be on time when there's a checkpoint. If you know there's not going to be a checkpoint, but you, you don't have but you to must do. be maintaining a cast across the free zone. So if it's ten miles and you're supposed to be going sixty miles an hour, you have ten minutes to get across the free zone. That you is correct. You cannot have lunch in ten minutes. That is correct. Right. That Not unless you do a time allowance, right? In, in, <laughs> or if you in, run, or you in know, the rally, you know, in the rat in the training rally that I put together, a free zone is truly a free zone. So 
you, you're you're right. You have to you have certainly have to keep calculating time because when you get to the end of the free See, zone, you have to know when to leave again. Right. See the way the way you're describing it, where you have a cat constantly have a cast for every you basically have a cast for every NRI. It's absolute. It's cumulative. That that's it. You got to stay in this rally. This example. It's cumulative. It's cumulative and absolute because you're always running against a specific start time. Right. In, in the, in, you can you can also do it. We, we've also set it up that you can start anytime you want. There isn't a specific start time. You know, if you're going to do a rally over a week's time and you can go anytime you want during the week you don't always tell them they have to start Saturday at one o'clock. They can start any day, any time. And then the times are all relative to whenever they started. Yeah. And if you use the, if you use the time between checkpoints, the free zone is truly a free zone. Well, what, what you're saying is you basically, you, you select your CZT, you, you decide when you're starting. You, you still have to, you have to start at a given time. Right. In, in, in a rally well, you, where you, you use a flying you start, start you, when, you, you get a time when you, when you run the time check. Yeah. You get a start time. When you hit the time check, that's your start time. Yep. Exactly. So just to get to the end, because this is the last piece of it here. And, and this is the other way these things can end. So I get to the end of this zone. And if I were to calculate all the way up here, I'd calculate 205.15. But the rally master basically in the instruction is going to say CZT 210. So now I'm, I'm done with that section. I've got a fresh start. I'm starting a transit zone here. I'm starting at 210. Um, I've got to get to NRI 40. And you're basically just like you're starting back here. You know, you zero the odometer. You've got an amount of time and you're trying to get to the end of that transit zone. And, and this, I think, Diane, is what you're saying. This is that fresh start. That, and when you run the rally on the 31st, if you choose to run, and I hope you all do, what you'll find is there's going to be basically four time sections of about 10 to 15 miles. And each of those will start with a CZT and you'll run for 10 or 12 miles. And then you'll get another transit zone. You'll run that transit zone. You're going to get another CZT and you'll get another fresh start. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. So in this, case, in this case, since we're car four, our, our out time would be 214. Correct. You'd just be 214. That's, right. what, that's right. what it's saying there. So, so that's, you know, and that's, once again, that, if, if people are really good, then, then you can start doing a whole lot of this calculations. But for, for folks that, that haven't done a whole lot of this, like I say, you'll get four fresh starts in, in, in that event. And, and you'll get a CZT for each one, and, and you'll probably have a little extra time. It's probably going to, you'll probably get to that location before the, the time, unless you go eat lunch, in which case maybe you'll be late, but you shouldn't. Do that. Well, <laughs> you can lead lunch. There will be a break in the middle. You will be a lead lunch if you want to. Yeah, I think for beginners that are first doing this, I think giving them a fresh fresh start time is is wise until people get the hang of it. I mean, for I'll call it non novice, you know, people yeah. then then having it cumulative and having to calculate along the way and make them cumulative and make time allowances is makes it more competitive um, for the people that are more seasoned. Right. And we'll, we'll get there someday, but we're not there today. You are correct. And, <laughs> and so, and so if you look at what a section of, of the January 31st rally is, it'll be a transit zone and then a time section. And it won't look like this. It'll look like this over here rather than, you know, 136 leaving. I'll probably say 150 PM CZT 150 PM. You got a transit zone and then you get to the next section and off you go. So you will have to deal with staying on time in the, in the scored sections for like 12 to 15, you know, 10 to 15 miles at a time, you'll be on time and it won't be, won't necessarily be, the, the roof falling will be easy. The timing might be a little bit challenging, but it'll, but it'll last for 12 or 15 minutes or 12 or 15 miles. Any other questions on this very busy chart before we move on? 
and you have this in the slides I gave you, you can kind of noodle over it. If you find any math errors, I'd love to hear about them. There probably are one or two in there. <laughs> they didn't, I double checked it, but I didn't triple check it. And triple checking usually is what it takes to get rid of all the errors. So, okay, let's keep going because we've got a little bit more to go here. So the time allowance piece here is if you do, if something happens and you do get delayed, you add time. So what, to whatever this, if you buy a time allowance, if I put in a two minute time allowance here, I, then I leave a 121 instead of 119. I put in two minute time allowance. And, and that's to deal with delays. If I get stuck by a train or I have to use the woods for things that men use the woods for, or I have to do something else and I need, and, you know, I'm late. So that, that, that's what this is for. The instructions are here, how to do it using the competitor app. You just push the TA plus button and it just adds that time into your perfect time. Um, you do have your to point, do it. You do your have point to. It, I'm sorry. Your point is that you have to be doing the calculations to know that you're late in order to know how much time to buy, correct? Well, that would be the best way. I mean, if, you know, it, it, like you say, if you get hit, like if you're running seat of pants and you get stopped by a train, what you want to do is you want to, you want to put a watch on it, you know, know how long you were sitting there. And if you were sitting there for six minutes then you pump in maybe six and a half because you lost some time in there, that's seat of pantsy way of doing it. Um, of course, if you do the calculations, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to know more accurately, but if you're seat of pants, positive, again, positive or negative. You six the, the train the train held you back. Yep. Do you put in plus time or negative time? Plus time. Okay. One push puts in 10 seconds, two puts in 20, three puts in 30, and then it'll go in in, in one minute in or 130, 230, 330. But it's a TA plus button. And if you think you put too much in, you can you can take it out with a TA minus. You give you know, maybe oh I thought I, I put too much in. I'll okay I'll set a TA minus. You can't do negative TA. It won't let you go negative. It won't let you like gain time, but you can you can add time and, and then go slower. You have to do it before you hit the checkpoint. That that's 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 uh, important. And rallies will usually have a maximum amount of bot time per section. Usually it's 19 and a half minutes. Although our rallies because we don't have people sitting at checkpoints, we don't really have to, 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 to hold that. I think if you get really late on the rally on the 31st, you know, the worst thing that's gonna happen is it's gonna get dark on you because the rally's over about 4.30 and it gets dark about 5.15. So don't, don't be too late. So what if we're off the route, it happens, you know, and you get that, that, that that sinking feeling in your stomach that I, you know, this ain't working. So what do you do? First thing, stop, stop. Don't dig, don't dig the hole deeper than it already is. Turn around, retrace your path. And this can be challenging if you've been on off course for a while, but, but, but retrace your path to the last point you knew you were on the route and you need to measure that mileage so you can get back to the official mileage because you've got to test, you know, you've gone that far off course, you're going to come back the same amount. So you've got to subtract two times off of that, uh, that, that mileage to get your official mileage back. Then you calculate how, how late you are and then you take a time allowance right there. So before you leave, you take the time allowance. And, and Jim, let me add that, uh, you know, I never do calculations, but you know, when I'm lost, I start a stopwatch when I find out that I'm lost and keep the stopwatch running until I get back on the route and I double that time and then I take a time allowance for that time. That's good practice, Gary. That's a very good practice. Proceed to pantsing it. Absolutely, yeah. Trick is knowing when you light off course. I mean, you're, you're, in, in your trap rallies, you know, you're, you know you're, you're sitting at this intersection and you're, you're, you're solving a logic problem and you're making a decision and then you start the watch, right? <laughs> because you know it's a good chance you might have not chosen the correct road. So the, tr the, the trick with that or this is that you won't know probably right away. When you leave the course, you won't know it. So you can't do that. But I know, I know what you're saying for trap rallies. That, that's actually good. That's good thinking. And the reason that it's important to take the time allowance immediately is 
you don't know where the next checkpoint is and you can't take the time allowance once you've passed that checkpoint, correct? Correct. correct. Um, I'm, going to, I, I'm going to give you one piece on the odometer correction factor. Um, basically, um, the official mileage is measured by the rally master. So, so I will go out on a 31st rally and some either using my correctable odometer, that's his box here, or using a GPS odometer, they work pretty well too. But I measure the course and that's official mileage. You won't get the same thing when you run the course. You're going to get something different. Hopefully it's not too different. And it's helpful. And at the beginning of the rally, there'll be something called the odometer, the odometer calibration run where you can run for you know, 10, 15, 20 miles and then compare your mileage to the official mileage and you can come up with a correction factor. This can be important in rallies where you're not zeroing the odometer. And, and if you are running a car where you've changed the tires and wheels and they're not, the, the, the odometer and speedometer aren't, aren't calibrated to statute miles very well, you might wanna do this. Um, you know, your odometer distance versus the official mileage at your correction factor, you know, if it's more than one, um, you're, you're running long, your mileage is higher than the rally masters. If it's less than one, you're, you're coming, no, no, it's the other way around. If you're, if you're, if your distance is more than the official mileage, this is, this is, um, this is greater than one and you're, you're going fat, you're, you're going further than, than the rally master was. And you have to take that out. So I'm, I'm not emphasizing it here because you're going to zero the odometer about every 10 miles or so. You're not going to get a big long run. So, so if you're close to statute miles and given the fact that we're all novices, I, I wouldn't sweat this very much. You know, and we, if we do advanced TSD rally, we'll, we'll get into a lot more of this stuff. But for our rallies, you're going to, you know, I think the longest run in the rally on the 31st is like 17 miles at the beginning, which is the auto calibration run. So you can do and see how close you are, but I wouldn't sweat the odometer correction for the rallies because, because one of the nice things about doing a lot of zeros is you don't accumulate a big odometer error and people can, it's easier to run good, good speeds and good times. So, but there it is. If you, if you want to work on it, you can choose to do that at the end of the, odometer check. So kind of coming to the end of this thing, driver tips, you know, watch for the street signs, you know, know what street you're on, you know, you as the driver have your eyes on the road all the time. The navigator doesn't. Navigator might be down reading the instructions or doing calculations um, or, you know, picking up a spilled cup of coffee or, or something, but, but they don't always have their eyes on the road. You as the driver always have your eyes on the road. So always know kind of what road you're on, what road you just passed, um, and, and that's important. It's, it's good practice to repeat instructions. If the navigator says, write a stop at T, and you say, write a stop at T, so you guys know you are, are, are speaking the same thing. And don't try to do the navigator's job. The only, the only um, exception to this is that if you have a car, sometimes you'll put and a set of instructions on a board and basically make a scroll out of it and put it in the middle. And so both people can look at it. And then the, if, the, if the ability to see the instructions, sometimes they don't have to ask for questions, but don't try to do the calculations. Don't try to do that. Don't do the navigator's job. Navigator tips, look ahead in the NRIs. You'll find some things where instructions are a couple tenths of a mile away or a tenth of a mile or 0.05 miles away. That's often happens for speed changes. And, and, it, and, and the, the January 31st rally, Delana Gallup has a couple of these where you know, you're running on a, on a highway and you're doing 60 and you're gonna do a side road into a, like a checkpoint road where the cast is gonna be 30. And there isn't a sign. I, you know, what I'd like to do is be able to cast you before you get to the turn. But, but what will happen is you get the side road and then the sign is like right there, like a hundredth down the road. So, so if you're the you navigator and then you see, oh, I'm supposed to be doing 30. You're, you know, you're on 60, you're supposed to be doing 30. You missed it and you're going 60 down this road that's, that, that you should not be going down to that road 60. And you realize you missed the sign and it's back there somewhere else. And, and, and if you don't have the mileage in the instructions then you have to, 
you have to figure it out. And if you do have the mileage and you can calculate up to it, but you've been doing 60 instead of 30, now you're really early. <laughs> now you're really early. So look ahead in the NRIs. That, that's, that's very good. Try to give the driver clear instructions. It, it can be hard. You know, you, know you, will, you will say left when you meant right, and it, you mean your other left. It will happen. But try to do your best to give clear and ambiguous instructions. And repeat them. I mean, especially on long runs, if you're doing down the road and you're, you're, you know, you've got three or four miles and you're looking for a left, you know, you start talking in the car and the next thing you know, that left came and went and you're, you're just, you know, the instruction was really clear. You had the mileage, you just missed it because you weren't paying attention. So it's always good for a navigator to start repeating instructions, like every half a mile or so, repeat the instructions. Just get in the habit of doing it. That way, if you miss it, you won't be more than a half a mile down the road before you realize you missed it. And don't try to do the driver's job. And that is really hard to do if you're a navigator. Like I say, communication. You, got, you, there ha you have to develop trust in the car. If you don't have trust in the car, you, it's, it, it, it isn't going to work out. You know, you just, you know, and, and it's, you get into that situation as a navigator and I've driven with, I've navigated for some really good drivers on some really brisk rallies where we were really humping and, and, you know, you just realize that he's got it. He's got it. And, and I can do my job and I can keep him on time and, and I don't have to worry about, you know, Scott Harvey's who I'm talking about, Diane, he, he was, you know, he got it. He was good. Um, so you have to have that trust. Um, once again, short mileage alerts, that, those are what'll, what'll, what'll get you. Um, make sure you do the whole instruction. Sometimes the instructions have a lot of pieces to them. You gotta give them the whole instruction. And remember your team, it's gonna, you will be frustrated. You will get, it, it, it will be, um, it will be a challenge. Um, but your team, you, you win together, you lose together. And, and you will, you know, when, when the finger pointing starts, then you're done for, you're just done for. And, and you just have to realize that you're in it together. Um, um, so here's a little bit about the app. Um, like when, and, and once again, we have really nice instructions on our website for this, but I just thought I'd run through it with you quickly. Um, when you open up the competitor app, you'll get a list of events. You find out which event you're on. Like you say, there's test rally East and West. Um, Delana Gallup is in there now, and then they all start with MBCA. So if you go down to the MBCA, you'll find all of our, our rallies. And you put it in there, the event password, which will, the organizers will give you, you put that in. Um, and then you get to put in the car number. And once again, you'll get a car number from, from the register uh, for, from the organizers. You create your own password the first time you put it in for that particular event. You hit continue. You would enter your class, uh, you could enter nothing or put in stock. In, in our rallies, until we get better at it, I'm not going to worry. Run, run what you brung. Just, just, just whatever, put your whatever. car, put your car model in. Put your car model in. Yeah, put your car model in. That would be fine too. Put your car in. Email, and the email is important because then you can get your, your, your logs back from, from, from App Central. Um, in your team name, put driver and navigator in for now. Um, we, we've talked about having team names, but, but for now, just put in the names of the people that are doing it. And then you will, um, you'll, you'll get the, the, the field that will have the clock, your score. This will be cumulative. It'll, it will like freak you out. Like the first time you get like, you know, if you get a four and then you got, you hit, you think you're, you got a four. Okay. I was early. I'm running, running, running. Okay. I'm perfect. Boom. You look at it four, another four. No, no, no. You got a zero, you, it's cumulative, you, it adds it up. So, so that, that freaked me out the first time I ran it. Um, this is important, this is GPS status. If this is not good, this was in my basement. Um, this should be, what, what do you say, Joe? Like five to 15 meter is, is where yep. this, this is really good. So if you're not running this, um, you know, then, and, and usually inside the car, even and with top up. And before, the, before you start, if you don't see it go down to 10, 15 meters, if you don't get a number there, you're not getting a GPS uh, connection in your car. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you're seeing like 65 meters, you probably have the GPS on the floor of the car or in somebody's purse or something. Or you have it off. The antenna. 
or you have it off or the your device has it off that's the other thing that oh, you can use. So, oh, okay but and there is a there is a an instruction that if you have trouble with your app that's the first thing you ought to look at and if if you're not getting a gps lock you really ought to restart your app yep. you know clear 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 your re shut off your phone restart the phone and restart the app and have that only that app running we and then it, when then, our, our first time out we didn't understand that we thought gps status was good and it wasn't um jim yeah. just to confirm the richta competitor app is available for both um apple and android yep and yes. correct. it's apple and android and if you download the instructions we actually have qr codes you can just shoot the qr code and go right and get the app and and you don't need to be connected to wi-fi when you're running the event so you can you can actually use a tablet that has a GPS in it, but you're you're not connected with a cell tower. You're not connected directly yeah. with Wi-Fi. That's exactly right. So having even your phone, you don't have to have your phone connected to to, to Wi-Fi when you're when you're running the event. Do plug it in. Do have an external power source though, because you will more than likely run out of power before, especially on Jim's longer runs. Indeed. And then as you run the rally, those checkpoint information, it'll tell you a leg one, it'll give you, that's the time you were there. It'll give you your score. And like I say, it'll accumulate up here. And this will populate in a series of rows and you'll be able to go up and down and look at it. For our test rallies, um, like I say, we're running a, these, these flying start checkpoints. So you can run it at your convenience. Your start time is at, like when you hit that checkpoint, your start time is the top of the next minute. In other words, if you hit that thing at like 125 and 30 seconds, your your car zero time or your out time is 126 p.m. It's the top of the next minute. So, but but the rally masters will explain that to you as well in their rallies. So, congratulations, you made it to the end, and we did it. We did it with four minutes to spare. Um. That's the end of the classroom session. Um, thanks for your attention. So we have, as part of the school, we've created two test rallies. Um, the rally masters are on this call. There's one in the West. It starts near Gainesville and Rio Harla is the uh, rally master. We have one on the east side of the state. Joe Martin is the rally master. And it's west of Augusta, it starts off uh, I-20 at exit 165. And those rallies are going to be available at least between the 17th and the 30th of January. And they're, they're basically available to you. So the, the, the protocol here is if you want to, um, if you want to run one or the other of those, um, you need to contact the rally master or just send me an email and, and tell me which one and you send it to rally at mbcapeachtree.com and send it to me and then I will get you connected with uh, the appropriate rally master and then they can give you, they will get you their generals and root instructions and, and help you through that, that process. That, that, that's and it the, folks. The, the, uh, the practice rallies are 30 minutes. I don't know, Rio, is yours about 30 minutes? Anyway, it's not long. Yeah, they're short. And, they're, and you can do it and you can do it more than once if you want. If my, the east one's a loop. So you can start at exit 165, do a loop and come back at 165, do another loop. Right. Yeah, rails is not a loop. It, it's not the end and the start are not that far apart. And 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 if you want to run it more than once, you can. Um, you'll need to get multiple car numbers from the rally masters. Um, that's that's the the uh, the trick there. You 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 can't if you keep running. You you won't you you won't trip the checkpoints if you run the same car number a second time. It it, it says oh you've already been here. So so you need another set of car numbers. So any other questions? 
if, if there aren't any questions, let me do a quick advertisement for our future events. Oh, wait a minute. Before you do that, I forgot what I was going to do here. I'm going to, I, I, uh, I knew I had one more slide in here. Ooh. And that is for the Delana Gallup Rally, which is Sunday, January 31st. It's leaving from Delanaga, the uh, la parking lot for um, uh, North Georgia University. Um, and it's where we started those couple of uh, the October and November mountain drives for anybody that was there. Uh, like I say, it's going to be straightforward. It's about 100 total miles. It's going to start at 1 o'clock on the 31st. It'll end about 4.30. Uh, there's about 30-something scored controls. A very straightforward route following, um, pretty easy timekeeping. I think it would be a great starter rally if you really wanted to, to, to try one on. Uh, hope you can make it. And now, Gary, it's all yours. All right.